An average two weeks of vacations to Europe from the USA or Asia can easily cost you more than 6,000 US dollar per person. And sometimes you may want to indulge yourself with a business class for such a long haul flight. You can easily be extra $6,000 more. Here is the breakdown. Let's say you are visiting three countries in Europe. You fly all the way there, you don't want to just visit one country. Economy class flights to three countries cost about $2,000 or $8,000 if you substitute one of the long haul flights with a business class. Two weeks of three to four star hotels, about $2,600. Food, $1,400. Just estimated about $100 per day. And you're spending $100 for the souvenir. Boom, you're spending $12,000 for the two weeks. Forget about the $12,000. I did my two weeks of vacation in Europe for $560 and I flew business class, lived in four-star hotels. And I'll show you how I did it. If you want to travel like me once the COVID-19 pandemic ends, you should start preparing the followings right now. As a solo world traveler who has been to almost 140 countries, one question I got a lot is that, how could you afford traveling around the world? Long story short, you don't need a lot of money to travel around the world. Last year, I did a trip from Singapore to Russia with only $560. I'll break it down into four types of expenses, flight, hotel, food, and souvenir. One of the most expensive items is always flight tickets. I got my flight for only $22. Are you ready? Firstly, I open credit card accounts with airline benefits. I'm a minimalist, so I don't open a lot of credit card accounts, only two or three credit cards that I actually need. For example, I got this United Explorer card with Chase Bank. Nowadays, a lot of credit card companies offer 60,000 miles bonus whenever you sign up for a new credit card. With some conditions, of course, such as you need to spend $3,000 in the first three months, but it is not hard to meet. Just to clarify, this is not any extra spending because most of us need to spend $1,000 in our daily life every month. So this is really your normal spending. If you need to spend extra in order to meet the requirements of the credit card, then you shouldn't do that. Now, during the COVID-19 pandemic, credit cards are getting really competitive. So it's a great timing for you to find some good credit card deals to get ready for your next flight once the pandemic ends. A good website for that is doctorofcredit.com. For example, I received 60,000 bonus miles just by signing up for this United Explorer card. Let's see how many miles it costs to redeem a flight from San Francisco or Singapore to Europe. On the United Air website, it says the safer redemption costs as low as 25,000 miles plus $5.60 to redeem a one-way from San Francisco to London. But as you can see here, by opening up a credit card, you already get one free round-trip ticket to Europe easily. The $5.60 taxes and fees are not fixed. So if your flights involve multiple airport transfers, your fees would go up. That's because airlines need to pay fees to different airports to serve their flights. Now, let's talk about the cost of redemption because that cost would change depends on the timing you redeem. Saver redemption is the cheapest timing. So don't redeem anything when it's expensive season. At that time, I bought my flight with 33,000 miles one way. The door closed and we'll be on our way. We can uh, leave a little bit early if all passengers are seated. For long haul flights, I like to take one way business class as well. So business class flights normally cost about 45,000 to 55,000 miles to redeem one way on mileage plus program for safer. That means if I take one way economy and one way business class, I need 78,000 miles. Previously, we talked about the 60,000 miles from opening the account. Now we just need an extra 18,000 miles to get a business class. For some of the credit cards as we spend on buying grocery, you may get five points for every $1 spend on certain stuff. For example, the Amazon American Express card that I've been using. So if you spend $1,000 on Amazon shopping or grocery per month, you get 5,000 points per month. And let's think about if you get 5,000 points or 5,000 miles per month, you just need 3.5 months to reach the 18,000 miles extra to reach the 78K. 
That being said, my Russia trip originally cost $8,000, now only costing 78,000 miles plus 22 US dollars. But credit card is not the only way I accumulate my points. I also accumulate my points just by flying my regular trips. Ready for my second tip? So secondly, I do a lot of flights per year. You know, with different countries and different destinations, it's very hard to always take the same alliance and get points to the same loyalty programs. But in each airline alliances, it's not just one airline, it's actually many, many airlines in one program. They are all partnerships. So for example, when I take my United flights, I can add my United points to the Singapore Airline Chris Flyer SQ program or the other way around. When I take my Singapore airline, I can also add points or miles into my United Mileage Plus program. Let's take my flight from Singapore to Bali, Indonesia. There are some direct flight with other airlines like Jetstar, which is actually a lot faster, only less than three hours flight, but they are not part of Star Alliance program. So I chose to take Garuda instead, which is a Star Alliance airline partner based in Indonesia. The pro is that it's much better services and food. I love the Indonesian food on Garuda flight. And of course, I get to earn points and miles into my Star Alliance program. But the con is that I would need to sit in the air for like 12 hours more transfers and time consuming. Depends on what you're looking for. If I have the time, I don't mind a good flying experience in exchange for a longer route. Although one flight doesn't offer a lot of points, but as I travel more, the points actually accumulate fast. This is a good transition for me to talk about the next topic, which is on how I book my hotel. I did the same minimalist approach for my hotel booking as well. So in the past 10 years, I only have two loyalty programs for all of my hotel bookings for all my trips. One is Marriott Bonvoy. The other is Hotels.com. I use Marriott Bonvoy for all the countries where Marriott chain hotels are operated which is not hard to find because they operate it in 130 countries total, which cover two thirds of the world already. And Marriott got many brands from the budget brands like Residence Inn to high-end brands like Ritz Carlton and JW Marriott. I accumulate my points with Marriott Bonvoy really, really fast because I used to have a lot of business trips where I stay in a hotel for like 28 days per month. So I accumulated 200,000 points just from my business trips, which has made me a titanium elite level member, higher than gold or silver membership. But you can also do it the credit card way or focus on one of the other loyalty program that you like. There are some credit cards such as the Marriott credit card that they pay you like 75,000 points as the bonus points. With that, it won't take you too long to accumulate 200,000 points like me. For the rest, one third of the countries in the world where Marriott doesn't operate, for example, like Pakistan and Sao Tome and Principe, which is a small island in Africa, I use Hotels.com. On Hotels.com, I get one free night on every 10 nights I book with them. So by focusing my loyalty program efforts into two programs only, it allows me to accumulate my points faster to redeem my free hotel nights when I travel. So during my trip in Russia, I stay in Renaissance Hotel, which is one of the brands under Marriott Bonvoy in Moscow and St. Petersburg. And I stay in the Marriott Hotel in Belarus for a total of eight days. The redemption on Marriott Bonvoy program was 10,000 points to 15,000 points per night. Renaissance was 15,000 points and Sheraton was 10,000 points. That means it cost me a total of 100,000 points for me to stay in Russia and Belarus. And for Moldova, there's no Marriott Hotel operating there. So I use my Hotels.com to book two days and I already accumulated one free night from my previous travel. So I redeem one night free and I just need to pay $104 for the one night stay in Moldova. Next, we talk about the food expenses during the travel because it's still a big expense. So one of the benefits staying in Marriott Hotel as a Titanium member is that whenever there's a VIP lounge in the hotel, 
which provides free breakfast, free happy hours, free drinks throughout the day until 8 p.m. The free breakfast in the hotel is a buffet, which got a lot of food. So if you eat breakfast buffet at 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. for like an hour or two, you basically don't need to pay for your lunch because you're simply really full. And for happy hours, it usually runs from 5 p.m. to 7 or 8 p.m., where they provide a lot of food, more than just the happy hour appetizer food, so I treat it like my dinner as well. That means I spend $0 on food just by staying in Marriott. Oh, I forgot to mention that Marriott also provides free bottles of water, so I don't even need to pay for my water bottles during the day. But of course, I want to try like local food as well. I spent $50 eating at a very famous local restaurant in Moscow where they serve like caviar and all the good traditional Russian stuff and another $30 on afternoon tea in a very famous cafe called White Rabbit where you can get a nice view of Moscow. It was really worth it spending on food. On the other hand, I also buy local coffees and bakeries here and there. So per day, I spend like $5-$10. So over the two weeks of time, I spent a total of like $227, on average $113 per week. And next is souvenir expense. I'm a minimalist, so I don't buy a lot of things. But I do collect magnets in every country I travel to. So I spend like $3 on buying a magnet in each of the country. But I also found Russian doll to be pretty interesting. I spent $10 buying a set. So a total I spent $23 on souvenir. I didn't calculate the local transportation fees because they are quite minimal. So what I've spent in summary, flight $22 for Russia and the other two one ways for Belarus and Moldova, total $206. Hotels $104, food $227, souvenir $23. That's a total of $560. I hope this video provides some useful information for you to plan your next travel financially. Remember, you can't accumulate points overnight so fast. So if you want to get your free trip when COVID-19 pandemic ends, you need to prepare for it now, really now. Apply for the credit cards that fit your needs, plan your spending with the right strategy to maximize your points, and fund the right loyalty programs and stick to them. Comments below if you have any other good tips to share. I would be very happy to learn from you as well. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you at the comment section. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. I hope this video provides some... I hope this... I hope this video... I hope... I hope... I hope... I hope this video... I hope this video provides some useful information for you to plan your next trip. I hope, I hope